Hello, Oracles. Well, today I was never so happy to be wrong in my life, pleasantly surprised with how the market rallied into the close. I thought for sure that today and tomorrow morning, we were going to see some rocky trading in the market because we have the CPI data coming out. Well, fortunately, that did not happen. We rallied into the close, which is a great bullish sign for tomorrow. However, with tomorrow coming with the CPI data, we still have time for, for some uncertainty, and if the number comes in higher than expected, it could be ugly. But, um, but if we can get through this tomorrow and continue this rally going, I can see it going on until early March because there's really nothing else coming until that time for negative catalysts. And then we have a lot of people, it looks like, on the sidelines still holding cash, waiting to see what the Fed decision is going to be. And so if this rally does continue after tomorrow, I'm still going to take a look at some of my lower conviction stocks to, to see where they're going to get profitable so that I can clear out and get some cash reserves. So yes, this rally is awesome. If it continues tomorrow, that's even more awesome. But don't forget, we still have to go through the Fed raising rates. Shouldn't be all that scary. This is just getting us back to where we were pre-pandemic, which is fine, but there is going to be some turbulence along the way just to get there. So in the meantime, I'm going to keep on uh, putting money into my high conviction stocks, freeing up cash from the ones that I don't have high conviction in to be able to utilize that because after we get through the rates going up, when we come out of it and get into a true rally, then we are going to see these players that are the strongest, like the Teslas, the Apples, the Microsofts. These are the players that are going to come out the strongest, and these are the ones that you're going to want to be most heavily invested in. And so far this week, two of my long-term plays are Enphase and Disney. Enphase had their earnings yesterday. They beat their earnings, shot up real high today, but there was a bunch of short selling going on. Um, so there was a little bit of a squeeze this morning. The price came down, but it's still uh, holding over 160. So it was a great day for Enphase. Disney also beat earnings today. So they beat their earnings. They were up 3% during the day and another 7% after hours. So Disney holding on strong, doing well. And we have just started getting to the point where the parks are going to be opening back up. The cruises are going to be starting back up again. So with all of these uh, COVID fears and, uh, and everything going away, getting things under control, we can see an extremely lucrative year for Disney going forward. And the last one I have earnings in this week is Affirm, which is tomorrow, AFRM. And, uh, and I know I was discussing with one of you in the comments today about how, you know, it's a rookie move because I'm looking to get it to, once I get profitable on it, sell it out. And, and part of my reasoning for that is because to me, Affirm is still one of those uncertain plays because we don't know how it's going to do down the road. It has a lot of potential. It has great partnerships with Amazon, with Target, you know, all the top players out there for, uh, for retail. It's working with all of them. So the company itself has itself a great foundation. But because of the uncertainty that we have going on throughout the course of the year and potential uh, valuation compressions happening again, um, I'm going to hold off because for me, while, yes, I'm in at around $90, if I sell it at $95, it could very well drop back down to $70. Now, I'm not just going to sell it just to sell it and free up cash. I, I do think the company will do well long term, but because of the fact that I want cash freed up for some of my higher conviction plays, or to even get back into a firm later at a lower price, that's just the way I'm looking at it. I just see my money doing better in other plays than sitting there in a firm during the next year where it could potentially go up and down significantly uh, and may, maybe just trade sideways for me. I'd rather have that money in a different play. And honestly, my real rookie mistake out of that was I bought in around 105, I lowered my dollar cost average down a little bit, and then it ran up to 150 and I did not take my profits. You know, I again, this is something we talk about, taking your emotions out of it, and it goes both ways. You know, when the stocks are red, you've got to take your emotions out to prevent yourself from panic selling. And when we're in a euphoric run, you've got to take your emotions out and realize logically the stock is way overvalued. Take your profits because it's probably going to come back down. And sure enough, I missed that one. My mistake. I was excited thinking this is going to go up forever. 
And again, that was my rookie mistake. So now I'm just trying to compensate for it and be like, you know what, if I take profits, I can at least put that money elsewhere. Or maybe I will decide at that time to hold on to it depending on how the earnings call goes. Let me know in the comments below. Do you have any, uh, any stocks that you've got earnings in this week? How did you do with your earnings this week? And uh, let me know if you think that this rally is going to continue with CPI data tomorrow. Let me know how long do you think it's going to go and what your strategy is for it. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. Thank you so much. Have a great one.